you did say you were a doctor, but so you knew better then, is what you're saying. Well, you know better, but you know, you're arrogant and you think you make excuses and you say, oh, this is just something mild that'll go away. And then suddenly it's disabling and you go and get it checked out finally. Now you were lucky. I was extremely lucky. I should have died for the amount of coronary artery disease I had. So you had you had what uh, clogged arteries? Yes, and that's yes. what that is. So mm-hmm. like cholesterol clogged to your veins? Is that what that is? Yes, they're plaques formed. They're cholesterol based plaques. There's platelets in there and fibrinogen and a lot of things. And uh, really, it's the vessel's attempt to inflame itself to correct to repair. Yeah, it sounds but scary. I think that's is. why people so, don't like to go to the doctors. Yes, I mean, I personally don't like to go to the doctors. Um, uh, like a lot of people, they they get nervous. I don't know what it is—the smell of uh, you know alcohol or that funny medical smell. But it is known that uh, if you have high blood pressure and you go into the doctors. Your, your elevation uh, will go up so many more. And even if you're not with high blood pressure, you think you did because people are freaked out that much that doctors, if they don't get the proper reading, they'll have to have you. That's why they tell you, you take your blood mm-hmm. pressure to make sure it's not just that because you can appear to have it, but not really, really have it. Well, that's called white coat hypertension, Keith. And, uh, it's a real thing, but the problem is that I thought that's all I had, but what I actually had was true hypertension. Okay. Untreated for too many years. Untreated. And that causes damage to the heart muscle, the vessels that supply the heart muscle, and uh, eventually they don't work anymore and they have to be repaired. Okay. And so I went in for open heart surgery and had- They opened you up? Yeah. So yeah. They yeah. cracked your chest? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you didn't get the- what my brother got um, a couple years ago, we got some stints. They literally yeah. cracked your chest- yeah, I was not stintable, if that's a word. They so you had that much damage. Jeez, you're, you're, you're a young guy. Yeah, I was I'm, in my mid fifties when that happened. So uh, did that just uh, did mm-hmm. that freak you out uh, at that? point? Well, it changed my life. It changed everything. It changed the way I approached my spirituality, the way I approached my health consciousness, and the way I approached my mission to why I'm on this planet. Quite frankly, so you did a total life evaluation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And what were some of the key things that uh, you started doing immediately after the surgery? Well, I uh, personally, health-wise, I changed everything I did in terms of diet. I'm, uh, you know, there are certain books written about this, and the Pritikin Institute down in South Florida. Actually, they run their um, their institute out of Mr. Trump's hotel down there. And, uh, I went, I went down there for a week and learned how to eat healthy. And this is not a plug for them because there's other programs. Sure. But, but you, do you have to, now let me just stop and linger there just for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I know how to eat, but when you say know how to eat, Mm -hmm. Break that down a little bit for the layperson. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking a little ranch uh, with the tomato and the, uh, the, the, the the iceberg lettuce, right? Uh, tomatoes, maybe a little broccoli with cheese, uh, caked on there, some Velveeta, maybe. Uh, okay, little tongue in cheek. Yeah, but, very uh, tongue in cheek. Like, do, we, do we really have to learn how to? Was it a salt diet where yeah. you cut a, cut eliminate salt from your diet? Was there much more to that? Well. What you have to do is understand that the food industry, and not to impugn them totally, but they have used salt, sugar, and fat to make things taste good and make us become addicted to them, and those things all cause problems. And MSG lives. and all sorts yeah. of stuff, yeah. And they, yeah, not even there, and mentioning the artificial stuff. But so, you know, the what works the best is completely eliminating those from your diet, but that's never going to happen because we live in a real world. Sure we do. Plus, we like things to taste good. So, so occasionally you'll go off the reservation, you know, maybe for a meal. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that, mm-hmm. um, because I do really try to eat well. But, you know, I, I get the cheeseburger occasionally and the fry. Mm-hmm. That's not a daily or weekly habit. It's just once in a while, if you're going to have a burger... <laughs> You got to have a few French fries with it, okay? Um, you can't eliminate everything a hundred percent, but there's a change that had to take place because obviously you did not want to go back. You don't want to go back under the knife. You don't want to get reclogged up right, because people right. can do that. Sure, you can go back in for more heart surgery if you're lucky enough, but you don't want to go through that because that's uh, 
don't ever want to do it again. That's trauma. No, uh, it's, no. it's opening your chest, and uh, that's just scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you learn to eat? Well, it's a gradual process, and you know you you know what the absolute is. And I think if we're just always heading toward the direction of absolute health, mm-hmm. then at least we're doing better than we used to do. And think of food differently. Yes. So uh, the most important thing is to know what you're eating, and know and concentrate on balance, moderation enjoying life, enjoying what you're eating, knowing what it is that you're putting into your mouth. You know, we eat so unconsciously because we're we're so programmed to think there's food associated with everything we do. And what I was going to say, too, back there, I kind of lost my train of thought, Sorry. is that you, um, when you eat healthy mm-hmm. and you go off the reservation, your body kind of sends out signals and you don't feel as good. Right, exactly. Um, I, I don't know if it's gluten. I don't know if it's certain things. I haven't had the prick test, you know, for all the allergens and things that can disagree with you and agree with you. But there's certain things in foods, uh, chemicals, hormones, just a, a plethora of things that can interfere with your body where it can give you a headache. It can raise your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, it can do a number of the blood sugar. And it can raise your blood pressure, by the way, folks. Sugar can do that. And finally, the American Heart Association is, uh, it's not just salt, folks. It's sugar, too. Sugar raises blood pressure. Now, they didn't always say that, but now they know that, and it's true. And so, you know, between diabetes and uh, heart disease, you have to get a handle on this. Um, you can see in my studio, I use Truvia. You know, mm-hmm. when I have some coffee, I use Truvia. And it's a, you know, a great alternative to sugar. And man, the average consumer uh, consumes uh, how much sugar uh, have you heard, doctor, that people put into their bodies unknowingly, daily? In a year, we probably take more than 100, in some cases, 150 pounds of sugar. So uh, it's in everything. That's bad. Because it's cheap and it makes things taste good and it makes so us yummy. get addicted to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, if you exercise, um, you can you know, and, 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 and daily or, you know, every other day mm-hmm. regimen, but you're frequent about it. It does seem like some things just roll off people where they can get away with a little bit more, but that's a healthy person um, that's gotten their blood levels to where they need to be. Mm-hmm. They're under a doctor's care still, mm-hmm. um, but they're not consuming that much sugar every day. It's there's a person that might go off the reservation maybe once or twice a week and it doesn't stick to them. It doesn't affect their health because they're exercising. I, there's something to exercise um, that burns off some of these chemicals, right? Yeah. I mean, exercise is phenomenal. It does so many great things. It, not only does it help just the calories you burn. Does but, it detoxify your body? Well, I, you know, certainly when you increase your sweating and urinary output through your kidneys, which are great cleansers of the blood by taking lots of fluids in while you're exercising. There's a huge cleansing effect. Absolutely. It's a good thing. Well, I've noticed in my own life now, when you had the operation, um, what was your weight? How big were you? We're going to get real personal now. Okay. Were you 250 or something? No, no, no. I was like 225. I wasn't that huge. I was actually in pretty good shape. I was running and playing tennis. Wait a second. But that's why I didn't die, Frank, quite frankly, because I had enough collateral circulation, they call it. Wow, you're a I lucky hit. guy. Yeah, so... Um, this is, A lot of people are not so lucky that one heart attack and they're dead. My dad, mm-hmm, such mm-hmm. such the case, he was a heavy smoker. Mm-hmm. He was an engineer, favorite b- burger and fries. He loved steak, but, you mm-hmm. know, that was his uh, go-to meal when he traveled to uh, fix people up. Mm-hmm. And um, boom, one one time and... That's it. And a lot of people are that way. They get the widow maker is what they call it. And uh, that's it. My brother, they say that he had that kind of heart attack, the widow maker. Um, But luckily he, before he passed out, he called nine one one. They got him in time before, uh, you know, any more damage, but he's got uh, three stints put in his heart. Yeah. Yeah. And he really, really has to watch himself, but uh, he still smokes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He still smokes cigarettes uh it does surprise me but there are people listening to this broadcast right now that smoke um how bad is that for your heart it's terrible i mean the, it's terrible the funny thing was each time i they were so surprised to see a youngish man there having had heart surgery the first question was you must have smoked but I you said, didn't said, no i never did i never smoked no cigarette. fumar for you right so uh, my mother smoked. Maybe there was enough passive 
smoking that I had the damage early on in life. I don't know the answer to that. But it's it's a horrible thing, and um, I think the public's pretty aware of that by now. All right, but. your book, Too Big to be Small, this is, is geared more towards children, right? Yes. Obviously, as a pediatrician, I became very aware of the obesity epidemic and very aware of what families needed in terms of education, help, support, inspiration, and uh, so that's where that book came from. And Ricky had always been involved in that, and she was looking for a doctor to work with her. And I was available, and we connected, and, and that was how that book came out. It's a pretty big deal because Ricky Lake, obviously, with her TV show, and she doesn't have that daily show she had, but, mm-hmm. you know, she was an actress and, you know, not just hairspray, but a lot of other things, but very mm-hmm. well-known, but a very strong advocate. And her herself, you know, I've mentioned this before when I've had you on, mm-hmm. um, that she has suffered from mm-hmm. weight gain, you know, ups and downs, kind of like a uh, talk show host Oprah Winfrey through mm-hmm. the years. And she's, you know, she's been up and down. It's it, it's not been easy, but she has children, I understand, of her own, right? Ricky has, yeah, teenagers. They're probably late teenage teenagers now. This has been a few years ago since we first initiated that book and website and so forth. So, so yeah, they're growing up, but she knows the challenges. And uh, luckily, she was in a position where she could control how things were prepared in her home, the food they bought, you know, she had help and so forth. So that makes it easier, but she was aware of the challenges. So, uh, so yeah, we worked on that together and that led to other things. All stride. Uh, yeah. there's another, uh, work that you, uh, collaborated with. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. is the all stride solution? Well, it's a whole series of food plans, exercise plans, and, uh, emotional, psychological support, a three-pronged approach, really, to dealing with. It has to do with food, with fitness, with the friends that you make. It's really the way we should approach our lives in general. But it turns out that if we live healthier, we'll have healthier weights and and have eliminate disease later on in life. No mystery, but the hard part is how do you do it? And it just gives you a few pointers and practical suggestions. And if you don't mind, Keith, I will mention a book I wrote later called The Alive Five is five things that every family could do today, start doing, which would lead to healthier lives. A friend of mine, um, and he he did ask me to to do this, but a good friend of our uh, broadcast, he said, uh, Keith, I just wanted to fill you in on something. He says, I was in the hospital, um, started uh, exercising again uh, one to two weeks ago and found out that my chest was feeling tight. I was also out of breath walking up and down the stairs in my house, checked myself in the hospital. turns out, he says that uh, my right coronary artery was clogged 95%. My -hmm. other coronary arteries were clogged 30 to 40%. I had a stint placed in my right coronary, and uh, medicines will take care of the other artery, was just released today. Mm -hmm. Well, my friend, God bless you, so happy. We got to get together and and have a healthy meal together and uh, join with your family and your uh, beautiful daughter. But I'm so glad that you're around because you know how I lost my dad suddenly. (sighs) That was a blessing. And this guy um, looks really healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I've seen pictures of him and he, you know, he speaks and uh, he's a great, great writer and a great contributor to, uh, to society, a brainiac. Um, But he had the tightness. Luckily, he was smart enough to check himself into the hospital. Like I said, a lot of people are just not, they're not so lucky. He was yeah. lucky, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, and the medicines are great. We would like to not have to be on medicine. And uh, that's one of the goals I'm working toward is to try to control with diet and exercise to the point where I don't need the cholesterol medicine. Amen. I don't need the blood pressure medicine. So, Well, I had a... Uh, this was about five years ago. The doctor said it was a little elevated, more than he liked. Mm-hmm. And he says, but I don't want to put you on medicine for uh, for that. And he says, I don't believe you have clogged arteries, but you're heading there if you don't you know, fix it. Mm-hmm. It freaked me out. So yeah. I started running almost every night. Mm-hmm. I came back about uh, three, four months. Totally 180 changed. Uh, perfect blood levels. He said, you were the fastest turnaround I've ever seen. What have you been doing? <laughs> I've been running every night. And he mm-hmm. goes, it worked. Mm-hmm. He said, keep up with what you're doing. He says, but you, you did it, and but you need to do this lifelong. You don't just, that's what happens with some people. They start feeling good, and then they revert back to old habits. Yep. How do you keep yourself from reverting back to old habits, Dr. Monaco? 
Uh, well, let's just say I haven't completely not reverted back to. All right, habits. so you have some <laughs> sins. You you like cake. Yeah, you I like mean, Cubans. Once, so I mean, we live in Tampa Bay, uh, where we do the studio. Fortunate. 